Several updates have been uh, introduced in the last few weeks on the F2012. Uh, How do you evaluate their impact on the car performance? Um, there, there were certainly a lot of updates um, between the, the last two races. I mean, we, there was a slightly different geometry front wing, um, you know, different floor, different turning vanes, brake ducts were different, um, body work was different, and, and a new rear wing. So, I mean, a lot of effort had gone in um, in the wind tunnel um, and in manufacturing. I mean, it's a, a good effort all round to get all the parts um, delivered to, to Barcelona. Um, I think most of them worked as expected. There are a few things that we, we're still looking at now, trying to understand if they're um, work, you know, working to the right level. I think, um, yeah, all, all the bits added performance, some just a little bit less than we're expecting. So all in all, I mean, I think everyone's you know, reasonably happy with the update we made. Obviously, um, we've still got a long way to go. Um, you know, we've, we've just got to keep on working at a, at a similar rate. Fernando's second place was a fantastic result, but was it really the mirror of our level of performance? Um, I mean, it was a, it's obviously a, a good result. Um, you know, I, I think in the end, you know, our, our pace in the first stint and third stint were um, quite reasonable, and we struggled a little bit more in the second and the, uh, the last stint. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to be racing at the front. Um, you know, it's, yeah, I think in the end, you know, Williams had the, the, the speed on, on us in the second stint and managed to jump us. So uh, I think, you know, it's, we just need to keep working as hard as we can to improve the car. There's, you know, I think we're, we're flattered slightly by cars being out of position. Um, but, you know, with qualifying so close and the, the strategy you adopt through qualifying, um, you know, I think this is the first time that we've been in a situation that has been equal to all the other teams. But I think everyone had one set of new um, soft tyres left or no soft tyres at all like, um, like Vettel. So, uh, you know, it's with everything so close, um, we've just got to try and get you know, every last little bit of performance and not make any mistakes. You mentioned the difference in performance of the uh, different sets of tyres. How much unpredictable is still the tyre behaviour this season? Um, it's it's certainly you know unpredictable. I mean, it's you know it varies with the um, you know small changes in track temperature have a large effect on the tyre performance. Um, I think it was China where that showed up um, or showed up the most. The, and it's also that you know that they're quite sensitive to temperature, um, and they're quite sensitive to the way the the drivers drive them. So you know, um, you know, on a normal three-stop race, if you're very very careful on the rear tyres, you might be able to get them to last for a two-stop race, but you can't, you know, you can't drive hard on the tyres, um, otherwise they degrade. So, um, it, it, you know, it's it's also a little bit when you try and push the tyres. You tend to damage them a little bit. So you know, when you're fighting in traffic, you take more out the tyres than you would do if you were running in clean air. Five different winners uh, on five different cars. How do you explain this unpredictable situation? Um, I think it is difficult to explain, isn't it? I suppose I mean it's it's good for the sport. I don't know how many years it's been, or if we've ever had, you know, five. It's not just five different drivers. It's five different teams. So I mean, it, I think it does show that um, you know the. The racing is all quite close this year. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it makes good entertainment. Monaco is a special race for fans, for drivers who enjoy driving there. Is it the same for an engineer? Is it the same type of challenge? Um, it, it offers different engineering challenges, and you obviously need to set the car up quite differently um, for Monaco. You know, in Monaco, you don't really attack all the corner entries as hard as you would at a normal circuit because there's barriers there and barriers at the exit. So, I mean, you set the car up a little bit differently, but um, I mean, it's certainly a challenge. Again, sort of trying to get the tyres to work there and trying to get the right car balance is you know, equally as difficult. So um, I think all circuits offer, offer a good challenge. What are the crucial factors for a, a winning car in this race in Monaco? Um, well, obviously, you know, Monaco is um, more about downforce and less about efficiency and engine power. So, you know, it, it, it's you know, you need the most downforce, you know, and you just need a consistent car. So, you know, the driver 
yeah, I, I think you can watch the lap times improve through practice and a lot of time just comes from the drivers and learning the circuit and getting used to the circuit. So you just, you know, you just need a, a good clean practice session and laps to try and get the driver used to the circuit. And do you think the F2012 uh, uh, can have uh, these characteristics in Monaco? Um, well, we're, we're obviously working to try and achieve that. I mean, I think it's, we, we've got a few more small updates, adds a little bit more downforce to the car. Um, I think the interesting thing, you know, as we just mentioned, would be how um, each car uses its tyres. From a strategic point of view, is it uh, more of a challenge there than anywhere else? Um, it's not really, no. I mean, I think it, it's, you know, it's quite a short lap, I suppose, so your thinking time is reduced. Um, but other than that, I mean, you're just looking at the normal things of, you know, trade and tyre de degradation against what the new sets are and where the traffic is, really. Obviously, Monaco is more about, um, you know, you've got to try and keep out the traffic and get a clear, a clear run at the race. So, I um, mean, you know, certainly if you're starting midfield, it's always a challenge. If you're starting at the front, it's, uh, it's a little bit easier. Looking at medium term, uh, how the F2012 will evolve uh, during the season? Um, well, I mean, it, it's just going to be you know, a constant um, drive for updating like everyone does these days. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, I mean, we're, we've got a you know, obviously different um, rear wing and front wing package for Canada, which is obviously a slightly different downforce level. Um, and then we're working on, um, you yeah, know, we're still working on the exhaust system. Um, there'll be versions of that that we'll, we'll test. We'll test. Hey, we, we learned a lot at the start of the year in understanding, um, you know, the problems that we had from that. And you know, we had another go at Magello, as some people would have seen. So, I mean, I think we've got a, a good understanding now. Um, but, you know, the, the performance, you know, we, we're just trying to put the performance on the car as, as quickly as we can. So, I mean, it will be a constant drive all the way through to the last race.